Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I am going to use some distress stains to dye some pages that could be bound in a book or used as an album background or a base for mixed media, anything that you'd like to do with it. But just some ideas on how to make some colorful backgrounds, something a little different than coffee or tea staining. So if that interests you, you have come to the right place. Let's get started. Figured I better put gloves on, because if I don't, y'all know me. So let's look at a few of the paper samples that I thought we could test out. This is a piece of pretty heavy mixed media paper. I think it's 90 pound or 100. This and this, these both of these are sketch paper. And this one is a pad of sketch paper. I think it's Canson. Not expensive, but more adult, I would say. And then this is a piece of like a kid's sketch paper. You know, those cheap ones you can get at the dollar store or the grocery store or wherever. And this is a piece of just standard copy paper. I believe it is 20 pound copy paper. So I was gonna try these out. The pigment I'm going to use today is I have some different colors of Distress Stain. And I thought, you know, they're water-based, so this would work out great. I could have used coffee or tea or, uh, I mean, whatever you want to use, I guess. Whatever is dispersible in water is really the main thing. You can test it out and see what happens. I just have this old cookie sheet that I use for crafting and a water bottle for misting. And I also have an eyedropper bottle filled with water and some dropper tubes. I got these at Amazon. I think there were one or 200 for a negligible amount. And let's get started. Let's do the regular copy paper first. And gonna take my water, just regular old water, and mist the paper on both sides. However you saturate your paper will probably yield different results as well. So you can play around with that and see, see what uh, floats your boat, or your goat, or your totes and your goats. Your goats and your totes. I'm just gonna take one of these colors and just open the bottle. I've already taken the dauber out of the top and put a little bit in the eyedropper. I'm gonna use a paintbrush to move it around. And because the paper is already damp, it will bleed into the paper fibers. I'll put it on this back for a minute because if I don't, I will most certainly knock it over. I take just the regular water and that pushes it further. Turn it over, see what it looks like back here. And if I wasn't doing this for demonstration purposes, I probably wouldn't be doing it on a cookie sheet. I would have it on just plastic on a either outside or on a big table or on the floor if you don't have kids or pets that would walk through it because the struggle is real, right? And then that way you could not have to pick it up. You just let it dry, let it do its thing. You can go all the way around the perimeter, which I'll do on another one. But I think this looks kind of cool. Just a little bit of color leaching up through the paper. I'm gonna go lay it on some plastic. Now let's try the Cheapo Kids sketch paper. Now I will pick this color. It is 
aged mahogany. Get a drippity dropper. Probably gonna look like dried blood or something. We will see. And of course, these could be watered down like a lot. They don't have to be this saturated. You can water them down with with water. <laughs> And zoom you in a little bit so you can watch it leach into the paper. It's kind of cool. I think that's looking pretty, pretty wicked. My friends that grew up in the 80s and the 90s, my grandmother was like, why would you say something's wicked? That sounds horrible. No, grandma. And if you did have a place where you could put out a bunch of plastic or something like that um, outside or wherever, then you could kind of spread out and do a whole bunch at once. And it will continue to kind of do its thing until, until the water stops moving and until the, the ink kind of sets. So let me go move this one. Zoom back all that. There we go. Let me move this one over to the plastic. Here is the more adult, adult, sounds like it's R-rated <laughs> sketch paper. The paper's a little thicker so maybe not so hard to move around. This one's called Wild Honey. It's kind of an amber color. I'm just using the little drip that came out of the top of the bottle. Add some water. Make it, make it move a little bit. And I also have this one called Fossilized Amber in a spray bottle. Oh, cool. let's see what this does. I don't want to dilute it too much to where you can't see any delineation between the original paper and the color. Yellow is one of those colors that can really get away from you really quickly. <laughs> Anybody ever painted a room yellow and you thought when you were picking out the color, you thought, oh, this is such a great, buttery, beautiful color. It's going to look just homey and cozy and great. And you get it home and you paint a wall and oh my God, it looks like a caution sign. It's like, what happened? Yellow can be extremely tricky. I have some friends that painted their house one time and she wanted yellow, like just like an accent, just not the whole thing, but just, you know, an accent. Bless her, she had her husband go get the yellow. She's like, I don't know, just a nice light, sunny, but not real strong yellow. And yeah, that was not the best of ideas because the color he chose was closer to uh, mac and cheese. Uh, it was funny. It was funny and it was, you know, was kind of tragic at the same time. Because <laughs> he painted the house. He did it. He just, he did it. And she's like, oh, wow, that is not really what I was envisioning. I all stood around and pondered the yellow for a while and decided that, you know, hey, at least you can see it in the dark. There's something to be said about that, I guess. Lesson learned. I'm going to pour some of this yellow off so it doesn't do what it did to my friend's house. Now, if you want to do more than one color, you might have to do some experimenting depending on the paper that you use and depending on the pigment that you decide to use. And you might want to wait for the paper to like dry halfway 
because you don't want the colors to mix together and get muddy. So experiment. I can't really tell you definitively when to do that because there are many variables involved. <laughs> but just be aware that if you do it right away, it might get muddy. So you can either wait for it to kind of settle or perhaps take a paper towel and dab off the excess. You can see this yellow has some definite orange in it. It's the amber color, I guess. And then if you let it dry totally, then it'll be a totally different effect, which you might even like better. So your mileage may vary, is what I'm saying. Let's try some of this um, broken china color, which is you know, teal. Brush out and just use what's on the edge here. Let's just see what it does. Where it hits the yellow, it's probably going to go green, I'm assuming. I kind of wanted them to melt a little bit and marry a little bit so it looks like, like it was deliberate. Heaven forbid something look random and spontaneous and not deliberate. <laughs> spontaneous accidents are always a good thing. Well, not always. When you have six children and then a seventh one comes along, some, sometimes it's not as all it's cracked up to be. Just ask my grandmother. Again, going back to my grandmother. My mom is the oldest of seven. And so my mom, of course, remembers the birth of all but probably the second child. Because the second child came along and my mom was only like two. You know, you're not going to remember that as clearly. But by the time three and four and five and you get the drift were coming along, she remembers them and she had exceedingly more responsibility and obligation. <laughs> she told me that she remembers saying to her, her mother as a young preteen, what, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> what is this purpose? Why do we need more bodies in the house? What's, what are we doing? I'd like to be in on this decision making since it's affecting me. I thought that was funny. Even as a 12 year old, my mom was like, uh, you know how to stop this, right? You know, the, you know the drill, right? Like they told you how you can manage this. It was funny. What a 12 year old will say to their parents in times of desperation. No, stop. I think my mom wanted to be a, a teenager and not a babysitter and a diaper changer. Some of you out there might, might relate to that. Now, this is kind of hard to see because it's on camera, a real subtle teal line that I've put around the edge. I think it's going to be cool to see what it looks like when they're dry. But wouldn't it be pretty to bind a book with gorgeous dyed pages like this? Kind of look like watercolor art, but you can do it on regular copy paper. You don't have to do it on thick, heavy paper. You can do it on paper that's easier to bind into cover. So I'm thinking the possibilities are endless depending on how much time you want to devote to making sure you have really cool pages because this will take a minute depending on how big your book is. The back side of the paper will look a little different than the front side. After they're dry you could go ahead and put them in your printer and print lines on it if you wanted or especially be really cool to print some black and white line art on top or script. I have some kits in my Etsy store, the PNG kits, and different images that are line art that can be printed just in black and white. So if you only have a black and white printer, you could print some really cool just pale line art on top of your gorgeous watercolor edged papers, right? Oh, y'all, as you can see, is white. Forgive me. This one's a more subtle effect. And they will lighten a bit as they 
dry. Quick, get the drip. I will go put this one on the plastic. Here is our mixed media paper. And I went and got some instant coffee and made a coffee solution for this. Just to try it out. Let's just see what the coffee does. And at this point, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to put some paper towels over to absorb the excess water to kind of arrest that saturation and then go back in. I could have just let it dry, but you know, nobody wants to sit around that long. <laughs> you got stuff to do, man. Went and added some more instant coffee to my water bottle, my dropper bottle, and made it a little darker. And let's add another layer on the rim here. You can get progressively darker, as dark as your coffee will get, I guess. And if your cookie sheet is a little warped like mine is, who knows where the color's going to go. <laughs> there we go. I think that will add a little bit extra around the edge, don't you think? All right. I will go put this on the plastic and I will let these dry and I'll be back. All right. So the paper has dried and I will show you what we came up with. This is the first one that we did. And as you can see, they're a lot lighter when they dry. So keep that in mind when you do this, if you decide to try something like this, maybe go further, darker, more intense than you would want because the colors will be muted when they dry. But I think we got some really cool pattern. So that one's pretty cool. This one was done with the iced spruce. This was the red one, duh, <laughs> the mahogany one. That's the back side. But I like how it concentrated around the edge of the paper and then bled inwards. I think it's a nice understated look and would be awesome as pages in a book. This is the one that I kept adding colors to. And it kind of looks like unicorn vomit, but I mean, no shade if unicorn vomit is your thing. Although it's real light, more like sherbet. Sher sherbet, sherbet. Is it sher sherbet? Sherbet, sherbet? <laughs> you can never say that. Kind of looks like pastel colors, but I think it's pretty cool. And then this was the piece of mixed media paper. And this is what one side ended up looking like, and this is the other side. I don't think it really got the dark rim. I don't think I got my coffee dark enough. It's still lighter in the center, but I could have gotten that darker. And then I just took a regular book page. I made sure it was damp first, and then I dipped it and let the coffee creep up and it gives it kind of a vignette look with a lighter center and a darker edge. I think it turned out pretty cool. And this is one that I was playing around with and had done on a piece of the Manila Kids sketchbook, the cheapo paper that I have a metric ton of. And this I used the broken china die and I wet it down and just barely touched the edges. It bled pretty well on this paper. It's probably because it's kind of porous. It's not smooth, smooth like copy paper, but it's more textured. And so I think those bigger fibers allow the, the dye or the ink, whatever, to leach in there and bleed through. 
So I think that could be really, really cool actually with some other colors as well. I hope you enjoyed this quick video today. I hope it gave you some ideas to try out some new methods to color your pages. It was great hanging out with you guys today and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.